I'm, I'm going to give a basic rundown on the gear that I'm using in this video for underage beaver. I use just a basic chisel um, on the end. This is, I don't know what type of style it's called, but this is the end that I use. Um, there's some that go at a complete angle all the way to the side. This is the one I have. So far, no complaints with it. It works pretty good. So let me use that for busting ice. Sometimes I'll use a basic S-wing axe for busting through the ice. The situation just kind of, or the tool depends on the situation. Sometimes I use the axe, sometimes I use the chisel. A lot of times when I'm doing like under ice on the, the creeks and rivers, and I know it's not going to be freezing up too bad, I'll use the axe to bust through. If I know I'm going to have to be busting through more ice, I use the chisel. It's just kind of dependent on what I think the ice situation is going to be like since the last time I was there. Typically, I don't use the axe when I'm setting, except for very first ice when I can't even walk on it. It's real thin. But most of the time, I'm using the chisel. I use H stands. You know, just basic H stands for 330s. I put them in bundles of five. And to wire up the bundles, I just use a rebar tire and rebar ties. I use this for, you know, bundling them up. Like I said, bundles of five because my, my crates here, I do 330s put into crates of, I put 15 330s in each crate. So if I do bundles of five with the H stands, I grab a crate of traps, I grab three bundles of stands. You know, 15 makes 15. And I, I use the same extension cable on the vast majority of all body grip sets that I make. So I have my trap tag on the end, followed by an adjustable loop. I'll try to undo this here. Should have had it undone before the video. But I coil them up in little coils like that and I keep them in a bucket. And I got seven feet of cable approximately. With, after the adjustable loop, seven feet of cable running on down. And then I come down to this point right here. You know, fixed loop with a barrel swivel. I believe it's a number nine barrel swivel. Uh, the only place I know of that you can buy them from is uh, snare supply stores for the most part. I know some fishing supply stores, like commercial fishing supplies, you know, sea fishing, they might supply them. I believe that they're made out of copper or brass. I'm not entirely sure on that. Then it's another fixed end, and then it keeps coming down, and finally it finishes at a fixed end. So this is one foot of cable right here, and how I have this set up. Here, I'll actually just show you on the trap. So, I take the spring. There's even a trap tag on the spring. I like to have a trap tag on both. That way, if one goes missing, there's still one to depend on. I feed it through the spring. And then I take the adjustable loop. And I take the trap tag and I stick it through the adjustable loop. Or through the fixed loop. Then followed by the adjustable loop through the fixed loop. And then I just work it all the way down on through. And then there it is on the trap. I want to get some snap or snap hooks or quick snaps, quick attaches, whatever you want to call them. I want to get some of those put on the, the fixed end there just for quick attachment to the trap. And then the other benefit of these cables so if I'm doing spring trapping, fall trapping, most of the time I'm staking or I'm attaching to a log of some sort. When I'm doing this under ice trapping, um, I'd say 99% of the time I'm attaching my trap to a stick on the lodge or the feed pile or some sort of stick that's accessed on site. And sometimes I don't have an easy access to a stick. I might have to go around a shrub. So after it's on the trap, I can open up the loop and I can feed it around the tree, and then I push the trap back through the loop, close it back on the cable, and then it's attached to the tree. And that's how the trap will be attached at that site. It's pretty rare that I'll do that when I'm beaver trapping. I do it when I'm bobcat trapping. Sometimes I'll do it spring beaver trapping, but the under ice trapping, it's pretty rare that I do that. Usually there's a stick that I can attach the adjustable loop right to. But if you saw when I coiled that up, I do four wraps, and then, from there, I just kind of feed it back through on itself. Typically, it's three to four wraps with the cable. I do that, and then I just throw them in the bucket for next time I use them. Now, with the under ice trapping, you'll notice a lot in this video, I use a sled. Don't really matter what type of sled you use, I just use this one because it's got a narrow head. I can 
weave it through brush a little bit better if it's hard to get access onto the pump. Um, you can use an otter sled, you can use a smaller sled than that. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you think is personal preference, that's just the one I use because it's what the store had and I thought it would work good for my needs. So I'll take the camera here and I'll show you how I got my traps set up in these crates. There might not be 15 in this crate, I believe there is though. That's how I got them in the crates. The crates, I believe they're 16 inch wide, um, they're a 1 by 12, and then they're 24 inch long. Well then they got the 3 quarter inch side, or 3 quarter inch wood, so all in all they're uh, 25 and a half long by 16 inches wide, approximately. It's the same exact dimensions that I use on my crates for my one and a halfs. But for the most part, the gear that I bring, uh, once it gets later in the year and I'm doing deeper under ice trapping, setting on the side of feed piles and I don't want to get down in the runs, at that point in time I will use a chainsaw to cut through ice, but you won't really see that in the video. Um, that's pretty much it that I have to explain the, the equipment that I use and now we'll get on to the trapping portion of it. So I'm just going to briefly kind of draw out how I'm making most of my sets in this video. Um, I got a few markers in hand trying to see which color works best. So majority of the time what we have is just a basic beaver lodge. And then outside of that beaver lodge there'll be a feed pile. You know, so there's the feed pile. We'll do an F for feed pile, L for lodge. And then typically off of the lodge, here I'll change my color here. Off of the lodge there'll be several entrances at minimum is two it's pretty rare there's two typically i find three uh, usually there'll be one on the back side and what we tend to call that is kind of just the eject hole or the trash hole garbage hole in the winter when the beavers are coming up in their lodge eating their food they seem to eject their food outside the lodge you'll notice in the spring that there'll be a bunch of shavings and sticks on the back side directly outside of this hole but a lot of times on the side of the lodge you know, there will be a run going out of the, on each side of the feed pile. Sometimes the feed pile covers up these runs. Sometimes there will be a run coming right out from under. And you'll notice in this video, um, when I'm, I don't know, standing in the water, I'm feeling for these runs. I'm feeling around with my feet trying to find the center of the run. And I'll even get down, hold my arms on the ice, and I'll kick my feet up into the entrance holes on the lodge. And when I'm doing that, I'm just trying to find the best spot to put that trap. Centered and as close to the lodge as possible is ideal. Um, sometimes there will even be another entrance off on the side. Like I said, if no two lodges are the same. I'll say that the rest of my life. No two lodges are the same. Every single one is different. Sometimes they're similar to other ones. And based off past experiences, you'll know how to set. Erase that real quick. So then with a lodge, you know, best way to describe it. So he'll be the lake bottom, river bottom, creek bottom, and then the lodge will come up off of that. And there'll be an entrance right there. The lodge will come up. And let's just say that this is on a bank. So then right here there'll be an entrance. Like that. So the beaver, they dorm in here. Sometimes you'll see a slope off the side of the hut and sometimes there'll be like a little actual landing pad. You can tell based on how the, the lodge is built that they land here and then they live over in another section. And then usually on those areas there'll be, you know, two entrances coming off usually off of this. They'll, they'll go almost 45 to 90 degrees from each other. And then right here will be the feed pile, you know, stick sticking up. And then when I'm in the water, setting my traps. I try to get as close to this point as possible so my trap will be set, you know, right here. You know, I'll stand in the water, I'll even bust a hole and I'll get down and I'll feel through the sticks and try to find this spot as best as I can to put that trap.
walking up to a beaver lodge. It's on this small river. Uh, we're off of a roadway. Turn. I think you might be able to see it behind me. I'm trying not to show myself, show the lodge. Good sized feet pile on this thing. So far we got a few beaver for the day. This is the last lodge we're checking. We got quite a few otter sets and some mink sets we gotta check yet. Turn the camera around and see what we can see. Good size feed pile. Lodge isn't too big, so I'm assuming the feed pile is big because it's shallow water. So they have to really spread it out. Right here, I know that we have trap right here, and then there's four around the lodge. So we're gonna, we're gonna set her up to where we can. Start trying to see some action, maybe. Take the axe and buck this one off. Still set. Let's try not to fall through the ice as we walk through. That stand right there is tipped over. Not sure if we have anything in it. It doesn't really look like it, but could be wrong. Not to bust through the ice here. Got another one right here, you can see the cable. I'm trying to see if I can see what would be in it. Right there. If there is something in it, it might just be tipped over. Sometimes that will happen, not too often. Cable's loose. Now we just gotta bust a hole. Right here in this mound, this is the beaver. thing about using these stands in the winter. Just trying to get them out from under the ice. There. Nice 
oversized beaver. It's a, it's a dark one. It's not quite black, but it's a nice dark one. There it is. Now our next trap is there with that stand. Let's see if we can't clean this lens off. one right there. It's quite the size difference between those two. We got one more trap we'll check. The stand is tipped over. Right here. Nice size one, it seems like. Ah. It's not big, but two-year-old. Let's see if the camera shows it. So we're going to get them out of the traps. I'll show you resetting, and then we'll show you the catch.
chuck five traps on this lodge. We caught three beaver, 60% catch rate. One trap was set off. Not too uncommon. And we got pretty much three different age classes of beaver. We got the young of the year, you know, a true kit. Then we got a two year old. And then we got an adult. These two could be a mated pair, but I think that's a two year old and that's one of the adults. So I'm going to bust the ice off and carry it back to the truck, load her up, and probably skin them tomorrow. Let them dry off a little. And if you look at the sets I'm using, they're just as simple as it gets. Just 330 on an H stand, cable off to a stick on the lodge. Set it in the entrance, set it in the runs. Wear some waders, hop in and feel. You don't need waders, you can always use sticks. You can prod with sticks and you can even take an angled piece of rebar or pipe and you can take that and you can feel up as you drop it in. Feel for the entrances. I know some people have done that up in Alaska. It's the only place I've heard of people doing it. But like I said, real simple sets. Just repeat it a hundred times and you'll catch a pile of beaver. You know, this isn't a pile, it's only three, but you do it a hundred times, that's 300 beaver, you know, hundred lodges. But We'll see how that goes. We're gonna come back next weekend and we'll check it again. way in the past two days the water dropped about two inches but yet the ice had refroze on top before the water dropped so kind of curious what happened it's not quite you know like a large body of water to where it would have got drained you know just from so much water flowage Looking down in there, I noticed my stand. Looks like it's been slightly moved. That might be a good sign. Trap is set off. Let's get me. Got ourselves a nice two year old beaver, adult size. I had a cow in here. I had suspicion there's probably only one in here. It might be a mated pair, it's hard to say. But I'm pulling traps today. We got three more lodges to check. In total, it's going to be uh, 11 more traps. Hopefully, we get a handful more. Well, we're going to bring him back to the truck and we're going to keep on checking traps. Come on, beaver, let's go. We're down here in just this narrow little creek. Creek flows through. It's 
standing on a log, got my setters between my legs. The water flows around this log, around this bend, and up that way. Right here at this pinch point, that's where I got a 330 set, we caught ourselves an otter. So we're going to pull him out of the trap and we'll show you how it's set. So there's the otter. It's a fairly small otter, young of the year. And right there's the trap. It's not much, you know, just 330, send the water on an H stand. I set the springs off to the side, help try to funnel it into the trap. If you center the trap, you're pretty much good. I honestly didn't expect to catch an otter here, but flowing water equals otter. So we're going to continue on down the line. So here's an example of a river, or a, it's actually a small creek that I have set. Uh, I do show the catch in one of the segments of this video. I had another clip and we just couldn't add it because somehow there was a malfunction with the camera when we were filming and we didn't get the film of the second trip around. But how this one works, so there's two culverts here, there's a culvert, there's a culvert, and then the creek has a little finger that comes off and there's another little pool right here, and there's another culvert. And then with that, in the spring, sometimes it'll be dry right here. In this past spring, I put a 330 right here and I made a caster bone and it was dry. Then we got about a two foot flood. My trap flooded over and I had an otter caught in that trap. And right there, from then on, I decided, well, I'm, in the fall when I'm otter trapping, I'm gonna put a trap right there. So I put one right there and there's a bunch of tag alders that come up over right here. And all I caught there in this trap this year was two beaver. I don't know where the beaver came from. I know way upstream this way there's an old dam. 
it's an old dam. There's no active colony up there downstream. Uh, the water is so shallow in the culverts, I don't know how the beaver would get through to where <laughs> them beaver travel a long ways to get in that trap. They're a nice sized beaver too. You get that every now and again. You never seem to get small ones in that situation. It seems like it's usually nice sized ones. But another thing to pay attention for in these spots is as that water comes around these bends, a lot of times they'll be like right before the bend, you know, the water's flowing in this direction. And then, you know, if an animal is coming downstream, it's going to go with that flow of the water as best as it can. So right here in this little nook right here, there are some branches sticking into the water. And then I'll try to draw a picture up here about how it went. You know, that's how the bottom looked. So right here is where I put my trap. And that was right there. But right here, that's where I caught the two beaver. It was actually a fairly productive set in my mind. Um, I think I checked it three times. It was frozen over every time. I did a one-week check, and the third check I pulled it. But two beaver out of three checks on a simple 330 set like that, I thought that was pretty good. So if you notice, there's this log right here. And there's this hole. Now that hole is naturally there. And right here on the side of the camera, I'll show you. It's an otter toilet on a peninsula on the, it's on a pool at the base of a dam. So we have a peninsula there, and I figured they'd be hugging that peninsula as they use their toilets right here. So right there, it was just a natural hole. I stabilized a 330, and if you notice, the 330 isn't there right now. That's because it's got an otter in it. Step back, I'll grab the camera. I'll show you a little bit of the surrounding area. So right here we got one toilet. There's several piles of otter scat on there. I'll bring the camera over there after we're done circling around. I the pool. It's kind of frozen up right now. There's the dam. Excuse the noise of the tripod. But it's just a rock dam with a bridge. And there's a large 150 acre rice flowage over there. I guess it's not large, it's only 150 acres. But around this parts, these parts, there's not many bodies of water that large. And you just got a steep bank over here. And then we're in a, a creek or a small river, depending how you want to look at it. Then over here, there's another spot where the otters are coming up on the bank. Right here, this is the toilet I was talking about. You can see the otter scat. So there's different areas in which you can trap otter. Areas where they play and areas where they travel. So the creeks and the rivers themselves are areas where they travel. And within those creeks and rivers, there are spots where they stop and play. And when the bodies of water are a little bit bigger like this and it's kind of hard to necessarily pinch them down, I like to get where they play. You know, the otters are coming up, they're defecating, they're creating their toilets, they're out here in this pool, they're digging for, you know, frogs, trying to catch fish, crawfish, etc. So it's just one of these times when they're coming through, they're going to want to naturally go through that hole. It's just a good blind set. Um, we're pulling traps today. Um, we're going to bring them up to the truck, bring the other traps up to the truck. Right here in the snow pile right there we have a 220 with a wood pan, but it got snowed in. So the otters, they're not going through that hole anymore. But if that snow wasn't there, I think the otters would have gone back through that. Because when I originally set that, you could see where the otters had been going up and over that. But we got the one otter at this location out of three traps. The other one's over here. If I can find it. On the screen. There's the other one. That one. Originally when I set it, it was underwater. So the water's dropped since I set it. But like I said, we're going to pull traps and we got two more stops that we're going to pull yet. And if we have something there, we'll show you.
Yeah, check this out. No water. Trip still set. But if you look right there, right next to my stand, there was this was a hole. I didn't open this. I opened it right at the trap, but I didn't open it here. And right here, the otter came up out of the ice and sat there and didn't get caught. <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> Sometimes you just can't make that type of stuff up. It's good humor. It's the type of stuff I like seeing. You know, obviously, I wish I caught the otter. But it's the humor of it that makes it so fun. No, what I'm doing is just trying to get my cable out. There we go. There we go. Now we're just let's open that ice to where we can get the trap out. There we go.
got another beaver lodge. We got three 330s set at this location, two in the lodge, one in the creek. There's a dead lodge going up the creek, and I figure if the beaver ever want to go there, I'd cut them off with another 330. Last check, we got a beaver here. Didn't get any footage of it. in just a little here. Oh, I think that's water. Oh. There we go, got ourselves a nice size beaver. It's not a terrible size. Let's make sure we got that in camera. Here you go. I'm gonna unhook the cable. Hook. We're gonna go to the other side, check out that trap. Last check, this trap was kind of frozen in. The run is really shallow, so the 30 is only about an inch under the water. That's all that's it. All I got for water here. Looks like it is still set. Yeah, this one's still set. So they might not be using it, it's hard to say. When I go to pull them, I just put the safeties on, then I knock the dog down with my foot. That way if somehow the safety pops off, you just knock the dog down. Your foot is going down and away from the trap, and it should not get caught in your foot. We're going to go check that one last trap over here. Is that this upright stick sticking out of the ice. I use that upright stick in case we get overflow because then my cable doesn't freeze down. So it kind of looks like there's some bubbles but it's hard to see if that's from catching something. two days ago to trip or to check. That's why the ice is kind of thin. It's been warm so hasn't really had a chance to reform. Nothing in that one either. Same thing. Take the safeties, put them on. Oh, get that safety back. There we go. Then I just knock it down with my foot. There we go. I got to unhook from the ice, though. It's, it's the bugaboo here. <laughs> <laughs> 